Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought we'd do a bit more work today on our eucalyptus bulb. Um, now this is roughly where we got to last time. We've smoothed down both the sides, um, just really to see whether that was something that was possible or not. Um, and actually the more I look at this, the more I think I want to have these slightly concave. Um, and for that, I'm going to be using my gouge. Um, now this is going to be quite a lot of gouge work. Um, so as per my previous couple of videos, I think I'm going to make a start. I'll move the camera around a few times just so you can see it from different angles and sort of see how we progress. Um, now for today's video, to keep this a little bit shorter, uh, well hopefully a bit shorter, I'm only going to do one side of this. Um, and that is the nice smooth side here, um, the one we've been working on. The other side, unfortunately, we have this big knot, um, and this is going to take quite a bit of work, um, so I'll probably do that off camera between now and the next episode. Um, so what I think I'll do, I'm just going to move the camera a bit closer in, and I'll show you what it is I've got set up. Right then guys, so here we are, and what I've done, I've got my um, bowl resting on its side here. Um, now because this is getting a slightly unusual shape, it's getting very difficult to try and clamp down and secure. So what I've done, I've just got two wedges here and here. I've screwed these down to my workbench, and what, they, what it means is that the uh, one side of the bowl can rest on this one, nice and solid, not getting any movement. The other one is butted up against this, so that if I hit it this way, I mean, there's still a little bit of movement in it, but not a great deal. And it just means that when my gouge starts biting into this side, it shouldn't have anywhere to go. Um, it might be a little bit jiggly, but I'm hoping this is gonna be okay. Um, so I'm gonna be using my little file gouge here. This is number seven, 35 mil sweep, lovely little great all round um, sort of all-purpose gouge. Um, now I do keep meaning to get a few more of these. I would like to get a bigger one, um, you know, maybe something kind of this kind of size, um, but I'll, I'll do that when time and funds allow. Um, so to start with, what I'm going to be doing is coming in from this side and cutting towards the end of the bowl. The reason for that is if I try and start here or here or here, there's a really good chance of taking off some quite big chunks that I'm not intending to. So what I'll do, if I start here and I'll be taking off fairly small pieces, maybe half an inch to an inch long, and as I work along this side, once I've got a little bit of an indentation here, I'll then move back and back and back and so on and so forth. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to make a start um, and as I say, I'll bring you round and move the camera about a bit so you can get an idea of what I'm doing. Right then guys, well that was getting a little bit tricky, there was a lot of wobble trying to keep this um, clamped down and steady. Um, so I've actually moved over to the way I would normally do um, using something like a draw knife. Um, now on the safety side this is kind of a bit 50-50, um, you know my gouge is up here and it's going away from me, I've got my bench as a stop down here. Um, but you know, I should just point out that if your gouge were to somehow slip off down the side of the bowl, it could potentially come in contact with your legs. So I'm not necessarily recommending this, it's just the way I found it to be a little bit easier. Because what I can do is I can trap the piece of work between my body and the bench. Um, and although you have to keep your head a little way back so you don't hit yourself with your mallet, you do have a lot more control over the gouge and the piece is not moving around so much.
Right then guys, so I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I have got quite a deep channel right in the center of this bowl now. I've left a couple of inches up top because I want a little bit of a sort of a lip up here. Um, and I'm moving away from my mallet and I'm just gonna be using my gouge freehand. Um, and what I wanna do is start smoothing down the bottom of this channel, to trying to blend it in. I mean, I'll need to do a bit more work down here later on. But essentially, all we're gonna be doing is joining up this sort of indentation along here into the bottom of the bowl. Um, now I wanna see how that works out first, um, and if it's not as um, concave as I want it to be, I'll come back later on. Now what I have found with this eucalyptus, and again this is the first time I've really used it properly as a carving wood, um, is that when I get to roughly the center, which is not unusual for a lot of woods, um, it no longer wants to cut towards the end of the piece of wood. So what I need to do is work from here, forwards up to here, and then when I finish this side, I need to flip it round and then work this way. And this is where having a really good sharp gouge comes into play. And as you can see, you now it's cutting really smoothly and this is quite a knotty wood. It does like to split off in little clumps, um, but just having this nice sharp gouge really, really helps with that. Right then guys, well I think that's about it for today's episode. Um, I've certainly made some good progress on this. Um, I haven't quite decided where I want to go with it yet. I may leave it like this. I may look to exaggerate that curve a bit more. Um, but hopefully you can sort of see here what it is I'm going for. So I realize the light's a little bit bad there, but if I bring this in sort of sideways, you kind of get, get an idea of what I'm looking at. Um, and bear in mind there is a lot of waste wood underneath here that's going to need to be carved away. Um, so really this bowl is going to probably end up about here where the bottom of this sort of sweeping curve is. Um, so what I think I'll do between now and the next episode, I'll work on the side that's got the knot on and I'll bring that down something approximately um, that looks like this. Um, it's going to be a lot of hard graft so I'm going to do that kind of as I say off camera. Um, now this was meant to be a fairly short video and I've got a sneaking suspicion it's actually going to end up running longer than most of the others of this series. Um, and actually in a way that works out quite well because this has taken a lot of work today. Um, I've probably been in the workshop today, maybe three, four hours maybe. Um, and that's because I've been doing this very slowly. I mean, I could have taken more of the sides off with the ax or the draw knife, um, but actually I wanted to see how this was gonna work. And because I'm a little bit unsure about this wood, I just wanna take things really, really slowly. Um, so that's where we are today. I hope it was useful. Comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks guys. Hey.